Recently, one of my online mentoring students brought up a really powerful and vulnerable question, and I thought it would be worthwhile to share it with you so you can benefit from the answer as well. In this question, they're relating how before they started my program, they would create highly rendered, highly polished fan art portraits. And that left them pretty unsatisfied because there was no room for their own imagination to come out through that artwork. And once they got into my program, they finally got the skill that they always wanted to draw from imagination and to let their own ideas come to life. And as they're earning this hard won skill, a doubt crept into their minds, which was even though I'm loving this new way of creating artwork, which is more linear and more off the cuff, I feel like it's not good enough. I feel like it's not quote unquote real finished art because there is no value rendering, there is no color rendering, it's basically just line and can that be enough and am I cutting myself short here from opportunities later down the road? Basically, will this be enough is this enough? Should I be doing more? And the real heartbreaker was that even though they had finally reached this momentous goal that they had for so long of being able to draw from imagination while having fun, they felt like a fraud because they were worrying that the art that they had landed on that gave them so much joy was seen by others as only as a starting point and not as complete, serious, real art. And in case we haven't met yet, my name is Carolyn. I am a practicing artist and online instructor, and I help artists who love to draw, but who are frustrated because they have these technical skill gaps and don't know how to get their big ideas out on the page and losing the joy of creating in the meantime. I'm getting them to a place where drawing isn't just fun again, but also where their skill level is up, their creativity is up, so they can create this artwork that they've always hope to one day be able to produce. So if that sounds like you, stick around, subscribe, and don't miss any of my upcoming videos. So I guess the first thing I wanna to say to my student and anybody else in a similar position is congratulations. First of all, you did the hard thing. You allowed yourself to pursue finding out what is actually important to you. You didn't just stop at this point of, well, all the art teachers tell me to do X, Y, or Z and then you reproduced that, you took it a step further and decided, you know what? My own goals, my own dreams have value and I'm gonna, I'm going to pursue them. I'm gonna put a lot of hard effort and work into them. And now you've reached your own ideal outcome. Not a lot of people have the guts to do that. So I wanna start by congratulating you for that. And as you have come to find out, once we pursue our own goals and our own ideas of what is exciting and what isn't, more questions come up, more doubts come up, like the ones you were sharing. Does that mean you were wrong in pursuing this to begin with? Absolutely not. It just means now you have to answer a few key questions for yourself. Let's start with the big one. The big one is, is this really your own thought? So the thought of, all art that is real art, all art that is quote unquote finished art has to be highly rendered and highly polished. Is that really your own thought? Do you really believe that? Or is this something you picked up either from a previous teacher, a parent, a fellow artist, or from a group of creatives that you're a part of? And if it isn't your own thought, what is it that you believe? Because I think that artists like Charlie McKesey or Claire Wendling or Marina Kapulova, Ja Cooper, Rian Portfliet, Alan Lee, the list goes on. A lot of these artists beg to differ that linear art can't be finished art. Of course, there's a range. You can have somebody who is creating linear art as a, as you mentioned, jumping off point for later more flushed out concept art pieces. Or like in the example of Marina Kapilova and Charlie McKessie, they create art that is line based, that is finished the way it is, and they're never intending to take it any further than a very loose and beautiful initial linear version of it. So let's think this through with some of my personal artworks. So when I first started, real art or finished art to me meant something like this. So this is not a particularly 
highly rendered piece. There's definitely more polished work out there, but it is rendered in the sense that there is a full value range. We have our darkest darks and we're gradually transitioning to lighter lights. Um, so this is what I would have thought of, of as a minimum necessary for getting the label of this is complete. And then seeing things like this, I would have never thought of it as just as valuable. I would have just thought, well, these are just sketches. And technically, I guess I wouldn't have been wrong. And neither are you if you're thinking in this way. Now, here is the problem, though. I totally enjoy creating artwork like this every once in a while. However, my personal goal, and I know a lot of my students, their personal goals is to be able to sit down and when I have some really weird image in my head, having the ability to just put it out on the page without having to struggle, without having to second guess myself, just being able to let it out and then see if I wanna work with it further. So even though what I showed you just previously has more polish and more finesse, that was never my goal when I set out to learn to draw. Like when I'm really honest with myself, what made me want to learn to draw when I first started, it wasn't the polished stuff. Like, yes, it's totally awesome. And I'm so happy that I have that skill as well. And I wouldn't want to miss it. But this is really what I came to art school for and I never got there. So let's continue with this thought experiment. This kind of artwork is similar to this. Now, are these impressive? Like, is this something that I would show to my um, parents or to my friends, say, hey, I'm an artist, aren't you impressed? Probably not, probably not. However, these are images that have lived inside of me for a while and they're really near and dear to my heart and I needed to honor them and I needed to let them out so they can become more than just this, or they can even just be out in the world to begin with. So no, this didn't stay as simple as this. It eventually became something like this. Not that different. Now let's compare now. What's the difference here? The pose is the same. The composition is the same. The simplicity of the background is the same. However, this is what I would consider an initial sketch to get my idea out. This is what I would consider a finished piece. Now, does it have this type of finish? Absolutely not. It's a very different style. It's a very different technique of finish. However, I consider this a finished piece because it accomplished exactly what I wanted it to accomplish create the character that I had in my mind and draw it in the way that the artists that I admire draw my most favorite artwork. So I was thinking about Alan Lee. I was thinking about Heinrich Klei. Those are the kind of artists that I had in the back of my mind that I wanted to inspire the style that I was using for this. And then for this piece, I had a different vision in mind. I wanted to have some tone in there. I wanted to have also line work. So both of these I consider finished artworks. Both are very different from what I used to think of as finished artwork. And yet these are more successful because they are truer to my own vision than what I showed you to begin with. Now, does that mean that I only create artwork that's heavily linear from here on out? Absolutely not. The beauty of really understanding how drawing works from the inside out is that you now have a full range that you can explore and express. So here I'm in the middle of a piece that is rather value driven. There is going to be a lot more contrast. There's going to be a very broad value range. There's going to be a lot of detail, a lot of, a lot of subtlety that was missing in the previous pieces. However, for the vision I had for this piece, I need all of this. So let's come back to my student's question. Can linear art that doesn't have color, doesn't have value, be considered a finished piece? And the answer is yes, it can. As long as it matches up with your vision for it. Think about it. 
Charlie McKessie. It's a simple, a few stroke ink drawing with some text, maybe a splotch of color here and there. This is not highly rendered. And yet he sold a whole book's worth of these drawings. And it works because this style, this technique is true to the type of visual storytelling that fits his personality. So instead of trying to jam ourselves into a style or technique that we see others produce, hoping that this will allow us to share the images we have inside of us, why don't we begin with figuring out what inspires you, getting you the skills that you need to get everything out that's inside of you, and then have a roster of questions that helps you assess whether you got to your initial vision or whether you got sidetracked by what do you think you're supposed to do. So with my students, one of the initial exercises we do together is to create a clear inspiration page that will guide your practice routine. So you know exactly what it is you're aiming for rather than just vaguely doing a still life drawing here and a landscape drawing there and then some portraits. We need to have a very clear picture of what it is exactly that you're aspiring to. And having this as your guideline then is a constant visual reminder of what it is that resonates with you and where it is you want to be able to end up. Now let's just say that in your vision board, in the, the repository of images that inspire you that you would love to create, you find a lot of very loose linear artwork where you know though, because you've researched this, that the artist used this only in quotation marks as a jumping off point. This was the initial idea like I showed you earlier on, but you know that they then produced a more polished version. Now, then you're presented with the next question, right? And that question would be, why is it that you want to draw? If the answer comes back, because if I don't draw, I'm really unhappy and I feel like I'm missing something huge in my life. And that is the most important part. It has to, the art that I produce has to align with who I am on the inside then I would encourage you to pursue exactly what makes you happy and accommodate that by having support that allows you to do so. What I mean by that is, if on the other hand, you, your, your reason for drawing is, well, because I like it, I'm good at it, and I wanna make money with this, then we do have to probably come up with some sort of a compromise. Now, yes, you can totally aim to become a concept artist who mainly makes their money by producing ideas instead of finished rendered pieces, knowing that you have to be exceptionally good to get that type of job, or you make a compromise with yourself where you say, even though I don't enjoy creating this rendered art as much, like I, my true passion is the linear, more loose stuff, I'm willing to every once in a while produce that rendered stuff for the sake of getting to have a job in this industry. So personally, I often work with artists that are from the previous category where it's drawing is so important and it's really all about using drawing as a means to discover what stories are hidden inside of them what are their what's their real creativity what is truly and authentically artwork that's only theirs but i can totally and absolutely understand and empathize and all of the above why some artists are willing to make that compromise of well i don't love creating rendered polished pieces, but I do love having an art job that pays me money. And I guess in that case, in that regard, that would be what Elizabeth Gilbert calls the shit sandwich. Every job, every profession, every career that you devote yourself to will have aspects that you just don't like, even though the entire rest of the career is your absolute favorite. So in, in the writer's example, hers was that she loves the that she gets to write stories but she hates having to do book tours that's her shit sandwich she's she's willing to eat the shit sandwich in order to get to have her dream career as an artist 
for me personally, I lived the life of a gallery artist for quite a while and it wasn't worth it for me. Creating artwork that was saleable, creating artwork that was befitting of a gallery situation, it almost killed my own creative spark and I had to rigorously reclaim it and restructure what part art had in my life. So now I am not earning my money by producing finished artworks. I still create finished artworks every once in a while, but only for my own sake, for my own enjoyment, because I'm really curious about it. I still share the artwork, but I'm not relying on it to pay my bills. That's where my teaching job comes in and that is a much better fit for me. So I guess the summary for this is don't let others define A, what makes you happy, and B, what real art is. There are millions of people in this world who draw and there are millions of ways of creating unique and beautiful and valuable art that people are going to be thrilled to see. Now, of course, the more skill you have, the more likely it is that that art's going to resonate with others as well. But there is no type of art that's inherently more worthy, more valuable than any other artwork. I truly believe that we all came to this world to become the kind of artists that we were meant to be in all the variety, in all the difference, in all the quirkiness that we all bring to our own drawings. It just doesn't make sense to me to believe that we have a creative impulse so then we can just all go to the same art school and all get the same exact art skills and produce the same exact artwork. It doesn't make sense to me. And if it doesn't make sense to you either, then you're in the right place. This is how I roll. This is how my community works and I, invite you to watch all of my videos to get you those skills that you need to create powerful artwork. And of course, also to consider working with me one-on-one -on -one in my mentoring program. And if you wanna see how this drawing ends up, make sure to follow me on Instagram because I might just post the finished version of that one day over there. And I'd love to say hi over there to you as well. So if you're brave, let me know in the comments what thoughts you're struggling with. What are the things that are holding you back from being the artist you've always dreamed of being? I'm here for it all and I would love to support you and cheer you on because we need more artists who draw and love what they produce. Take care.